I'm a publishing product director at Wargaming Labs. So uh, before joining Wargaming Labs, I uh, uh, I've been with uh, Wargaming uh, for around five years. Uh, when I started, I did uh, uh, meta games. I was generally thinking of cool ideas. Uh, I was also the one responsible for launching our top title, uh, World of Tanks, in uh, Chinese and South Korean uh, internet cafes. And uh, when I joined the Wargaming Labs team, I, uh, uh, I helped publishing uh, Master of Orion Reboot. That's a top base strategy. So, uh, let's take a step back uh, and see how Wargaming actually started and how it's progressed over time. So, uh, back then in the 1990s, uh, so there was no Wargaming, uh, no big structure, no big company, no, no nothing. There was just a small team of uh, students passionate about gaming. Uh, and they decided to create their first game. It was a turn-based strategy called Iron Age. Uh, it was 1995, so when they did it, they shared this game uh, with, with their fellow students, with uh, uh, teachers and other guys. So uh, people who played the game really enjoyed it, really, really liked it. So, and guys decided back then, so it's, uh, let's uh, start up a company. And let's call it Wargaming. So in 1998, uh, Wargaming started. Uh, then they decided that they need some money to uh, actually uh, run the company and create other games. So uh, they created their first commercially successful title. Uh, it, it was also turn-based strategy, named DBA Online. So. The commercial success helped them uh, cre create many other games. So over six years they created games uh, in, in military setting mostly. And then in 2010 uh, we struck gold with uh, our top title, uh, it's World of Tanks. So and we never looked back, uh, so everything changed since then. Uh, now we are like a well-known uh, kind of company the world, so we are constantly expanding our gaming port portfolio. Uh, people who follow Wargaming know about other uh, games like World of Warships, World of Warplanes, uh, Blitz game on mobile, and some other. So we're getting nominated and we're getting prizes for our games. We've got 17 offices open all over the world, so basically we've got uh, quite long, long hands. So, and uh, we've got around 4,000 employees working for Wargaming uh, around the world. So, let's stay up uh, a little bit back uh, and um, see uh, like what we do uh, for developers and for other small teams who, who actually develop services and applications. So at Wargaming, we've always had a strong feeling of giving something back. So it's like we remember that uh, Wargaming was a small team of passionate students who created games, right? So and we want to help uh, developers um, and other teams to create services and uh, applications uh, for our uh, top titles. Okay, so. Uh, in 2012, uh, we started developers partner program. Uh, its main goal was to attract those developers and let them uh, pr provide them with tools to create their own services and applications. So we created a number of APIs and we saw that uh, different developers from different countries all over the world started creating those applications and services which means that uh, this idea was really welcomed by many people. So we see that the number of applications has been growing all the time since, since we started. And uh, guys are really passionate about creating such uh, applications and services uh, for all our titles, which is a really cool idea. So, the good thing is that not only the number of uh, applications uh, is growing, but it helped uh, different developers to monetize uh, their applications and services th thanks to Wargaming. 
So, so how working in labs uh, started? So of course it didn't happen overnight. Uh, so wargaming started as a um, initiative uh, to create um, our first third-party title, uh, Master of Orion. We, uh, we cooperated with a um, development studio in Argentina, uh, so it's NGD Studios. So these guys helped us create uh, Master of Orion. We taught a lot of lessons uh, from cooperation with these guys. And we also helped them actually create and, and, and launch the game eventually. So, ultimately, Wargaming Labs is a small team uh, with uh, agile and startup spirit. So, we provide product evaluation uh, of different games which are submitted to Wargaming Labs. Uh, some people ask me at different conferences, like, uh, you're, you're talking about Wargaming Labs and Wargaming. So, is Wargaming Labs a separate company? The answer is no, it's not a separate company, it's just a division at Wargaming. So basically it means that we have the connection to all uh, wargaming resources, PR, marketing, business intelligence, and everything else uh, throughout the world. So uh, we are particularly interested uh, in uh, PC games, uh, which are at uh, alpha or beta stage. Uh, and um, uh, we really like to see uh, innovative and experimental game mechanics. I will speak about that a little bit later. So, about Board Event Labs uh, core pillars. So, first of all, we want to broaden the, the horizons, uh, gaming horizons, of course, and to uh, help young, young talents uh, in the industry to get noticed, to get exposed, uh, and to become successful eventually. So we, uh, we've got a lot of uh, development and publishing expertise in the, and of course we, we would like to share it and we think and we know that that this helps uh, developers actually become successful. It really helps uh, them when they create games. So and, uh, and of course when we, when we talk uh, about uh, players, uh, so we think uh, that uh, Games should be not only for a particular group of players, like you know, people who like military games and that's why they play World of Tanks. No, we are interested in different games which would address different audiences, even youngsters, uh, older people, diff diff different ages and uh, playing preferences. So uh, a little bit of, of uh, a little bit about our portfolio. So what we have done so far. Uh, Master of Orion game, just like I mentioned, that's a, a reboot of a well-known uh, strat strategy game. Uh, Hybrid Wars, that was a top-down shooter, it was a, a fruitful cooperation uh, with a small Russian studio. So these guys came to us uh, asking guys, could you please help us uh, finish the game and, uh, and publish it? So that's, that's what we did. That was a pretty cool project. So uh, we recently announced a uh, new game Caliber. So we are doing this in cooperation with a big Russian studio. So it's a third person tactical shooter. For now it's going to be um, primarily um, in CIS. Uh, but uh, we will see if we want to make it global. So, uh, also during 2016 we ran a mobile season where we picked uh, a number of perspective mobile projects and we also launched the uh, Gods and Glory game uh, which is uh, for iOS uh, and, and Android. So, and uh, of course, um, the best way to, to find games and to scout for games is to, event, uh, is to um, participate in different events like this. Game shows, game conferences, and that's what, uh, that's what we've been doing and we're going to continue doing so. We think that uh, such, um, such events are, are really, really helpful uh, for young talents because uh, ultimately that's the place where they, they can get feedback for their games or they can get proper knowledge uh, when they will decide that they want to work uh, on, uh, in, in gaming industry overall. 
So, what we offer for games which are submitted to, uh, to Wargaming Labs, so it's a two-level game review process. So basically, it's like uh, sometimes um, the only thing uh, holding back a truly great project is uh, the absence of proper feedback uh, from publishers and from people who uh, who has got this uh, knowledge and expertise. So that's that's what we do. Uh, no matter if uh, if we decide to go forward with the game or not, we give feedback anyway. I mean, it's always useful uh, to talk to people and tell them like uh, what they miss in the game or what they need to reconsider probably. So it's all about feedback. F feedback is important. So uh, in our reports that we create, we, we provide the information on game design, we, what needs to be improved, what works good, what works bad, if the, if the game has got the proper uh, game look and everything. So it's like we, we provide feedback on this. Monetization. Monetization is, a set, is the most essential part of each game. One thing is uh, if you decide to, to go premium and you just sell, uh, if you want to sell your game at a particular price, it's one thing, everything is quite simple here, you just need a proper business case. So, but if you decide to go free to play, it's not that easy. And uh, at Wargaming we consider that we've got all the necessary experience in free-to-play so and, uh, we, uh, we take the approach when we uh, tailor a uh, monetization model for each game specifically. So basically in order to make it look individual. So also we, we talk about marketing opportunities. So marketing opportunities is very important because it helps us to define uh, the target audience for the game. Uh, I can see that many people are talking about the case of yeah, I'm going to develop a game and I'm, gonna, and I'm going to sell it to everyone in, in the world. But they forget that not all people are actually interested, uh, might be interested in this game. And it's very important to define your player's portrait to see it like age, uh, their gaming preferences. And when you get this portrait, it helps you actually uh, create proper game for these proper audiences, which will eventually help you sell the game better in the end. So that's what we, we, we also do. And we provide, of course, regional feedback. Why this is important? So, uh, originally, Wargaming has been operating games in four regions. Uh, first one is uh, CIS, which basically includes all post-Soviet Union countries. Second one is Europe, uh, and it also includes Middle East and North Africa. Uh, third one is North America and South America. And fourth region is APAC, which is basically Australia, Oceania and uh, Asia, excluding China. China is a separate story. It's tricky. Everything is quite tricky about China. <laughs> so, but it's still an option for us. Okay. So, it is always important to understand if the game has got a local feed, local market feed, or global feed. Because you can see that, let's say in South Korea, you can see a lot of games which are uh, pr primarily like Asian exclusive. And you won't see those in North America or in Europe or in CIS. You won't see those games. That's because of the specific the specifics of those games. And people who create games, particularly for Asia, they know that these games won't sell in Russia. That's why they don't even position them there. So, and that's why we have this regional feedback and all those regional pub publishing producers who provide us with this kind of feedback. They actually evaluate the game and say, okay, so we think that this game might have a good fit for our region. Okay, so yeah, let's do it. So basically, it's, it's either globally or locally. So, what we value in, in, in our partnerships? Of course, it's passion for gaming. Like, every, every game developer needs to be a gamer, first of all passionate, really motivated gamer. So passion drives actually successful games. 
uh, we really value innovative gameplay experience, why it is important. Uh, like people who develop games and people who play games know that like the market nowadays is overcrowded with uh, small and big titles, right? So it's like there's no probably room for a real, real competitive game. But I see that many uh, developers are now trying to to use the trick of uh, um, combining uh, different genres let's say RPG game and fighter and that's how they get a new game right so so basically it, uh, it starts to look fresh and interesting that's what raises actually interest among other players that's why we say that innovative gameplay and all those experimental me mechanics are important it's very good when people are not afraid of experimenting and they don't go cliche. So we, uh, we always like to share uh, the desire for success. People who are really motivated, who are really passionate about gaming, of course they are thinking about success. And we like to share this success with them. And of course it's commitment. So people need to be really committed to creating great titles. If they don't have commitment, nothing will work. So we know that for sure. So a couple of words about our plans for future. Of course, we are going to keep on collaborating with developers. We are going to keep on attending uh, game shows like, uh, like this all over the world, telling, telling about publishing opportunities, telling about uh, opportunities in, uh, in, in co-publishing and everything else. So basically we, we like that and we see big value in that. Uh, we are really interested in expanding our gaming portfolio. So just like I mentioned, it is very important for us to get new perspective games and that's what we are looking for. And uh, we think that it's very a good thing uh, to come to developers and to game events, just like I mentioned, and talk to them in person, meet them in person, talk to them in person and actually get proper feedback. So we think that it's way more productive than just talking over emails. It is okay, like everybody can send an email, right? But as long as you don't meet with people, like you, you, you cannot get what they really want, what they really need, what they really feel, and where they need this help. So we are glad to provide any kind of help. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you. If you. Merci beaucoup. Uh, Tunisia is great. The event is great. So if you have any questions, guys, just uh, yeah, well, ask. No, good, good. Everyone is.